Uh, so do you, do you own a salon or do you own a suite? I have a salon suite in Austin, Texas. I actually have two salon suites with a wall that's been taken out from the middle. So I am able to have two styling chairs and one shampoo bowl and I have an apprentice. Oh, nice. Uh, that's awesome. You have an apprentice. Uh, so when did you decide that you wanted to join the sweet life? I decided I wanted to join the sweet life when I became pregnant with my first son and I wanted to start working part-time rental. And she said that she won't do part-time booth rental. So I did find a teeny tiny salon suite that was uh, less money than my full week's rent at the booth rental salon. So I moved over to that salon suite. And that was that was good because I was able to control my environment and my schedule with the salon suite environment. And I was able to work in my maternity leave and my part-time work schedule in the salon suite. Nice. So my thinking was I need to make sure I can pay less money for rent and spend some quality time working only part-time. Okay, cool. Awesome. And, um, and did you, so you worked at a booth rental, did you, uh, before that, did you work at a commission-based salon before that? I did before I worked at a commission-based salon where I felt like it was a great opportunity to learn from the other hairstylists and learn the best practices to be a successful hairstylist by learning how to upsell your clients on conditioning treatments and other services, learning how to be able to sell your clients retail without feeling uncomfortable. And then the best part was looking around and seeing everybody else and their work. That's something I do miss working in a salon suite was looking around and seeing everyone else being amazing. And me, I just get to see what I do and then they leave. And then sometimes I'll be able to see someone walk by with fabulous hair and try to find out who did it. Okay, but cool. I do value my commission, my commission experience as much as my booth rental experience. That's awesome. I'm really, I'm really glad that you said that, um, that cause, cause I think a lot of times there's a, a battle between which one's better. And I don't think that that's the question. I think it's which one's best for no, you. It's just how, what fits your career, the timing in your career and your, your goals and your ability to take on more responsibility if you do want to go out on your own. Yeah. Well, and so like, since that's what we're talking about today, uh, what, what, why don't you tell us a little bit about your process? So let's just say that I'm deciding to go out on my own and uh, rent, uh, get a suite. And, um, but I, but I haven't done any work towards it. I've just been working and doing hair. And for whatever reason, uh, whether it's like, I don't like my boss or I need more flexibility or I want more control, or I mean, really one big thing uh, personally for me is I really want to control. I really want to have like control over the aesthetic of the environment. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, I feel like a lot of stylists say that as well. So tell me, and I'm, and I'm asking you, uh, what would be the process or tell us about your process so that I can like learn, learn what the steps were. Wouldn't it be nice to go and have your own room with your own creativity and your own paint colors and your own shelving and the mood and the theme and your, your uniqueness shine through. I mean, it's a dream. You get your private office, but there's a lot of extra work that goes involved with having your own salon suite. And it's not just going up to work every day and being the technician, you have to always, you have to also think about managing the business, managing your schedule, managing your booking, managing the inventory, buying the inventory, buying the retail, buying your education, and then also managing your social media, your marketing, your website, always keeping that updated. So you do have two extra jobs when you do move into a salon suite. You're the technician, you're the manager, and you're also the innovator for your company. So you're not just coming to work in your business. You have to actually come to work on your business and being a self-employed person that you never feel like you stop working on your business. 
But if you do, if you're at that stage of your career where you feel like you can handle all of that, uh, my advice would be to calculate your average service ticket and multiply that by how many clients you want to see a day, how many days a week you want to work, and then out what the salon suite rent will be for the suite you want to rent and do the math and see if that's going to be enough to pay each week. And you, it's hard because you really want to move to a salon suite, but if you do and you're not making enough to earn an income because of the salon rent being so high, it's, you might want to wait until you have more clientele or a higher average service ticket because there's not any walk-in clients that come by. I mean, you bring what you bring, you have to advertise on social media and marketing to get your people to come in. So, uh, so the first thing I do is I run the numbers to see if it's even realistic. I think that's pretty solid advice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, okay. So, and you know, what's interesting is uh, the, you said, what is your average ticket price? And the only way place I've ever seen the average ticket price is when a manager and an owner sits down with, with the, like the super hated, like it's time for your goals conversation. Uh, so that, so it's actually, I should be paying attention a little more there. Um, okay. So I got my average ticket price. I figure out like, um, how many clients, uh, I'm going to be able to do per day, you know, now that I don't have, I'm not going to have assistants and uh, front desk. And, uh, and so I can't do as many clients right there. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so I take how many clients I figure out my, what my rent is. And then I do the math and make sure that I can pay my rent of my house where I live in and my food and maybe some savings. Uh, okay. I think that's a good place to start. All right. So I've done the math and the math works out and I'm still excited and the math looks good. All right. So now what's my next step? Let's see. The next step would be to decide if you want to start working part-time in a salon suite, you could rent out the room to, with another person split the week up into three and three days each. And that way you can get used to the environment, see if you like it, see if your clients like that location and get a feel for it. So that could be one option is, is going in slowly working, splitting a room with someone else. And the ones in my salon suite, they're hundred square feet. So it's one chair and one shampoo bowl. And if you're used to having double booking and that type of income, it's very, very difficult to do that in a hundred square feet room. Okay. It's possible, but it's difficult. So understanding your work uh, schedule and how you want to manage that and then see if it's even physically possible in a hundred square foot room is very important to consider. Okay. So I got my, I got, I, I got my, I figured out the money situation. I've figured out the, the, uh, the logistics and the space and, uh, uh, and I'm still excited and I'm still ready to go now, but I'm still working in a salon and all of I've done is these steps. Uh, so now what, what's my next move? So the next step, once you've got all of your logistics figured out with the money and your income and your scheduling and your room decor that you've been dreaming about on Pinterest, I would say to blast your clientele on social media, have them follow you, make sure they're following you so they know how to find you when you do leave the salon. They, you don't want your clients calling the salon desk asking where you went. You wanna preemptively tell them you're considering moving to a salon suite, how much you love them as a client, you want them to come with you because you value them so much and they will follow you to where you're moving to. And knowing the clientele that live near the salon suite I'm in right now has 40 rooms. So I've seen a lot of people come and seen a lot of the people come and go, a lot of rooms turn over. And what we figured out is that the stylists who prepared their arrival before they got here were better off than the ones that just showed up and then tried looking for clients. And ways to doing that is searching on Instagram or Facebook of surrounding high schools and clubs and 
country clubs and marketing to those clients that you are on your way to that area. Okay. So, um, so like, let's say I have an Instagram and, um, you know, I think depending on how seasoned you are is going to determine how many followers you are like on, right. on the majority, uh, and the majority, I mean, there's like, there's a lot of us that are pretty active on social media, but in my experience, uh, the longer you've been doing hair, the less likely, the lower your followers are because you were doing hair and building, right. yourself, you know? So anyway, um, so let's say that that's, that's what we're talking about. Uh, the people who don't, their customers, they didn't actively, um, they don't have their access to their customers and they're not active on social media. So what I hear you saying is get your shit together and start <laughs> spreading your handle so that people know who you are. I do. I think that's important for the type of person who all these young people that are on social media, I'm like you, I'm old and I did business cards and referral programs and knocked on doors and gave out my business cards. So word of mouth has been my greatest success for referrals and the going on Instagram and liking someone's picture so that they follow me back is new to me. I can see how it works, but what's worked for me is my clients referring their friends and I was able to get their phone numbers and their emails so that when I did leave the salon, I was able to email blast them where I was going. And that was eight years ago. And when email was, you know, the prime right. communication, now it's more Facebook blasts or Instagram blasts. Okay. Where so, you're okay. So I've, I've done my logistics. I figured out the math is going to work out. And now I just got to like lock down my clientele. So I start, um, I start promoting my uh, Instagram being like, Hey, what's up while I'm blow drying your hair. been like, Oh, do you follow me on Instagram? Well, you should follow me. No, like follow me. <laughs> <laughs> I am leaving. You need to follow me to the new spot. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Um, and I feel like I got to do a whole series on, on that because that's, you know, stylists going to a salon to build a clientele with the intention of leaving is a new phenomenon mm -hmm. and our industry. Mm -hmm. um, so I really want to have a set, but we, we can have a whole separate conversation about that. Okay. Going back. Uh, so I build mm -hmm. up my clientele. I, I, I promote myself. I like, I promote through my chair, my, my social media. Um, I, I also just think it's a great way to connect with your customers. They can mm -hmm. stay in tune with your life. They can Send stay out. in tune with every holiday emails send out pictures of your kids they love all that stuff mm -hmm. yeah exactly yeah it's a relationship mm -hmm. um okay so so i have my clients i know the numbers work but like what can i use i liked what you said about like preempt like m doing um some marketing stuff for uh nearby stuff to like anticipate having to build new clients prior mm -hmm. as you're as right. you're moving in i love that that's awesome uh but what about like what can I do about like supplies and furniture and stuff like that? Like, um, what do you recommend like I do to handle that? That is a great thing to consider because it's really easy to spend $5,000 on decoration if you wanted to, right? Like, there's so many nice things you can buy. But what have I've had, what I've had success with is Ikea. I know it's, trendy five years ago, but for a small space, it really helps you maximize the storage in the small space. So I would go in and measure the room, figure out where this, the shampoo bowl is situated and how you're going to be able to organize your room with your color bar and your styling chair and your mirror and your, your workstation. It's important to kind of Feel, imagine what it's going to feel like to actually be there because it's a teeny tiny space. It's a 100 square feet and you're kind of like an octopus reaching over here for this, reaching over here for that and moving the client two steps this way to the shampoo bowl and two steps this way. So I've had luck with Ikea. I've had luck with garage sales. I found this great hutch cabinet that I use for my color bar and it cost me a hundred bucks and I just painted it and it looked amazing. Uh, wallpaper is a really hot trend right now. Having one wall be some sort of accent piece. Yeah, um, and it, you 
you already right think about furniture. Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, if you haven't already in the course of this show checked out her website, you could check out her wallpaper and look on her Instagram. She's got some wallpaper. It looks awesome. Anyway, sorry, I had to say that. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. I did have a designer help me. I can't take credit for how amazing it looks. I did have someone help me do that. I do the hair. She does the walls. Okay. okay. She um, did help me take the in-process photos. So that would be something great to market yourself with is picture taking photos of the room before you even have step foot in it it's a blank boring room and showing a picture of yourself painting this or picking out this thing just to show your clientele that they're getting excited right you're building this for them so that they can come see your new room is a great way to do marketing um i mean they the salon suites do provide a lot of furniture to start out with if you're on a budget so oh, really? you could paint it and hang a couple pictures. You don't need to budget too much for the actual move in. Once you do have enough money to save up and spend on decorations, then you can kind of go wild. But I'd say the majority of the salon suites do provide you the bare minimum of what you need oh, right away. So they're, they're turnkey usually. And luck if, if they're a great spot. So they're turnkey? Like, yes. The, the big ones, Salons by JC, Sola Salons, Phoenix Salons, um, uh loft salons they do provide the the, set, the basics for you oh nice okay yeah. wow so that does take a lot off of my my shoulders mm -hmm. so all i really need is to make sure that i'm going to be able to pay my rent and uh and have my clients and okay well, what about what about like uh supplies so that yes. might, you know, well, that's a big one because that's a very expensive part as hairstylists in a commission salon we don't think about how much it actually costs and the rep does come by every week so i am able to order in small amounts each week i spend about oh five to seven hundred dollars on colors and then for shampoos probably five five hundred to a thousand each month so to budget for for that would be great what if, once you start paying for your own shampoos to sell you you want to sell them because you just spent all that money <laughs> stocking your shelves you want to make your money back totally but the the luxury we have as salon suites is that we're not tied to one retail brand so if you wanted to go to the to the supplier and say tell me your top 10 selling products and they're all different brands, then go ahead, stock all those different brands in your salon and sell them. You don't have to be loyal to one brand in order to make your money. I mean, pick the high grossing uh, shampoos and products to make your money. Um, I got a question mm -hmm. about uh, supplies. Uh, what was, what should like someone think would be like a startup cost for the salon? Like I'm, I'm trying to do my budget and part of my budget has to have my uh my supplies Let, like just to give everybody a realistic understanding of how much money they're going to need to make this move uh what is this what do you think the startup costs for the for the supplies are going to be that's a great question that is a great question and it depends on your quantity of clients that you want to pull through the door I have a friend who works two suites down. He just moved in and he has maybe 20 boxes of color. And he says, if they want something fancy, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to spend the money on buying the colors. <laughs> so it works. People do it. You know, he's, he's splitting the room with someone. He comes in three days a week and that's all he wants to do. He is, that is his max Okay. where I spend, I have my whole color line and if there's a new color i'm buying three boxes to try it out um so so the some of the brands do offer an introductory purchase if you do switch to their line they'll give you a deal if you buy in bulk of their color line so ask ask about those for sure okay maybe a thousand dollars for color okay. and a thousand dollars for products at the beginning, I would oh, say, because you need to buy the, the perforated plastic and the foils and the brushes and 
the bleaches and all the lighteners that adds that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so would you, I mean, I guess if you're a seasoned stylist, you know how much, you know exactly like what you colors you do. So I guess you could like focus on buying the colors you know you use and skipping over other colors. But what if I wanted uh, to have a full line? Um, I mean, maybe not full, full, but like mostly full line. Uh, do you still think a thousand bucks would be enough? I think so. If you just get one of each color and then you can always order more when the rep comes that week and Got replace it. that box you use. It's, okay. I wouldn't say I, I buy in bulk anymore. I just buy 10 or so boxes each week. Okay. And that's so, easiest for me. Yeah. So I only need a couple thousand bucks and uh, maybe a little bit more. What about like a deposit um, on the rent? Uh, the the salons by JC, they give you so many weeks free when you sign. So you do have a couple weeks to get your room ready and to have that cushion. But I would say at least a month's worth of rent and savings at all times, especially okay. with COVID. You know, we had in Texas, we had two months of no income. And that put a lot of people out. We had more than 30% of our hair stylists leave their salon suite in May wow. of this of 2020 because they didn't have the savings. Yeah. No, that's okay. Cool. So I like that. Uh, I think um, if you want to go on by the skin of your teeth, then uh, go to the blackjack table. But if you want to be successful, <laughs> If you want to be successful, you should have a couple thousand bucks, two to three thousand dollars for supplies, and probably the same amount of money in the bank, depending on what your rent is. Uh, but have at least one month mm -hmm. as a backup. So maybe have two months worth of rent plus two to three thousand dollars for supplies before you sign any paperwork, is what I'm hearing. Absolutely. The website for Salons by JC has a profit calculator that helps you uh, figure out if you're re ready to move to a salon. I think it helps you calculate what you're earning as a commission stylist and if you would be able to work to earn more as a salon suite stylist. I don't know if it goes into your personal budget or not, but there's plenty of budgeting classes to take for how much of your percentage of profit you're supposed to spend on your supplies, how much you're supposed to spend on your rent and your accounting and main, uh, utilities and everything. So knowing those numbers is a part of owning your business. You have to know what your budget is to spend on products each month. Uh, okay, this is great. This is amazing. I have... Uh... Before we uh, wrap it up, um, I would like to know, do you recommend any uh, books or, uh, or courses or anything uh, that we can, uh, you know, put little like, uh, you know, put in the caption of this mm -hmm. show uh, to give to our viewers? Absolutely. There's a book that I read that changed my perception of starting my own business. It's called The E-Myth Revisited. Have you heard of it? No, I haven't. This is it's awesome. a great book. And I can't remember who it's by, but it's a book that talks about small business owners and the E myth, the E is entrepreneur. And the myth is that small businesses are started by these innovative thinking entrepreneur people that just want to start a business. And that's false. The people who start businesses are technicians who are really good at their job and they decide to go out on their own. And he explains how important it is to work on the business as opposed to just in the business. When you do what, like I've been saying, you have to have all this extra responsibilities once you do start your business. And a lot of people don't understand that responsibility when they do move out on their own. They think they can just show up to work and go home and be done when that's, that's not true. So that e-myth, Revisited is a great book. Uh, I like to end each interview with asking my guests to share a story of the most embarrassing moment in the salon or with clients. Uh, <laughs> so, 
So I would love to hear your your most embarrassing moment if uh, if it's if you can laugh about it at least. <laughs> Right, because this everyone's gonna see this, right? Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been doing my own laundry for eight years because I've been in the salon suite for eight years and that's towels and cutting capes and coloring capes and bringing home huge bags of laundry every day and taking them home and then bringing them back and folding them and blah, blah, blah. And one day I got out one of my color capes and shushed it out and put it around a client and my underwear was stuck to the velcro of the cutting cape. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is a new one. I've never heard that one. <laughs> well, I hope they were cute underwear. Of course. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will go with yes on that. Good. They were. <laughs> okay, that's 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 important. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, um, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to uh, talk with us and share your experiences and your views. And I really appreciate your advice. And um, I'll make sure to leave the uh, recommendations for the books and and classes as well. And uh, if anybody wants to reach out to Lisa, then uh, they I'll put the Instagram handle. Is it okay if they DM you? Yes, absolutely. It's at Madam Kennedy Style on Instagram. Okay, great. And I'll put that up uh, on the video, but also in the caption. Uh, and or in, or if you want to just reach out to me, I can always do a con do connect you with her. All right. Well, and thanks again. And um, I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you. It was a pleasure. I had so much fun. All right. All right, well, you take care and uh, we'll talk later.